Now let's talk about the mean absolute deviation, or MAD, if you will. When we're trying to find the mean absolute deviation, it's really a fancy way for saying, what's the average distance that the data points are away from the mean? So again, to find the average, we're gonna end up adding these all up. So I'm going to add the distance, the average distance. So one plus one, which is two, plus zero, which is two, three, and four. So I have a distance of four, but I have to remember how many data points I have. I don't have four, I have five, right? One, two, three, four, five. My MAD for list one would be four fifths. Remember I said to find the mean absolute deviation, we needed to find that distance between each data point and the mean. Mathematically, that's gonna be absolute value. So we're gonna take the absolute value of the data point minus the mean to start. Now remember, one, this is our first data point, one minus two would be a negative one, but I'm taking the absolute value, right? So I'm going to get one. I'm gonna repeat this for each of the data points. Next, I wanna add all these numbers up. So I'm gonna write one, 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 zero, and one, and I add these up to get four. Then I'm going to divide by my number of data points, so four, divided by five. Now let's think about how we would interpret the MAD, or mean absolute deviation. The MAD tells us, by the way, this is a precursor for variance in talking about that. So if we have a really small MAD, it tells us that my data is really clustered around the mean, versus if we have a really large MAD, that tells me that my data is really spread out. It's more spaced out from the mean. So again, the mean absolute deviation tells us how clustered our data is or how spread out it is. I can also think of the mean absolute deviation as telling me what's the typical or the average distance that each data point is away from the mean. Lastly, I wanna show you the mathematical formula that we use to find the mean absolute deviation. I have a caveat though. I do not recommend using the formula to teach students how to find the mean absolute deviation. Remember, it's very important that we stay in the conceptual, then go to the pictorial, and lastly end up in the symbolic. Equations and formulas are very symbolic, which is great if students have that underlying knowledge necessary um, to understand what they're actually doing. Because now that you understand, I'm going to show you the formula and you're going to be like, oh, that makes so much sense. So here we go. Okay, so to find the MAD, what I'm going to do is take, I'm going to write this sigma, and then I'm going to have the absolute value of x minus x with the line over it. We're going to talk about what that means in just a minute, over n. What this tells me is I need to first start by taking the absolute value of each data point and subtracting out the sample mean. This is the sign, the symbol for sample mean in statistics. So I'm gonna take the absolute value of that. Then I have this sigma here. The sigma tells me to add them all up or sum them all up, okay? So I need to take each data point, subtract the mean, take the absolute value of that, and then add them all up. Then I need to divide by n, and that just represents the number of data points in the sample. So this is the number of data points in my sample. I'm going to divide it by that n. That is how I get the mean absolute deviation mathematically. Again, I do not recommend starting with that. Um, start with the conceptual for your students, and then lastly, move to the symbolic. What's really cool is that mean absolute deviation is the precursor for standard deviation. So this is how we can get our students to start getting at those deeper level statistics ideas in earlier grades. So to recap, when we're interpreting the mean absolute deviation, the smaller the MAD, the more clustered our data is, the larger the MAD, the more spread out our data is. I hope you found this video helpful on mean absolute deviation and you've now got a better idea on how to interpret those and a better idea about how to find the mean of blocks in a more concrete way.